In this lesson, we're going to add the recipes to the game. It should look pretty familiar. It's a lot like the quest. We're going to have a recipe model. We'll have a recipe factory. The player is going to have a recipes property to hold the recipes that they know. And we'll display the player's known recipes in the UI. The first step will be to open the solution and go into the item factory and create some ingredients for the granola bar. Those are on lines 23 through 25. I added some miscellaneous items for oats, honey, and raisins. And this just uses the existing build miscellaneous item helper function. Next, in the engine models folder, create a recipe class. This is a pretty simple class. We have an integer ID property, a string name, which we populate through the constructor. And we have two list properties, ingredients and output items. They're a list of item quantity objects. And this is an item ID and an integer quantity. So for the ingredients, we're going to say to make a granola bar, you need one oat, one honey, and one raisin. The output items is going to be one granola bar. I have it as a list property so that we can potentially output multiple items Maybe you want to have some scrap or some waste items at the end of the creation. But for right now, we're just going to do the simple recipe. And on lines 19 through 33, I have two helper functions, one for adding the ingredient and one for adding the output item to the properties. And these just have some little guards in here to make sure that we don't already have the ingredient as one of the required ingredients or have the item an item that matches an existing item ID in the output items. Next, in the engine factories folder, we'll create a recipe factory, which will look a lot like the quest factory. It's a static class with a static kind of construction function, the function that runs the first time you use anything from recipe factory. This function will populate our underscore recipes list, our list of known recipes in the game. And then lines 22 through 25, we have our recipe by ID function. You pass in an ID and we'll get the first recipe object that matches the ID. And inside our pseudo constructor code, you see that we're creating our granola bar recipe. The recipe ID is one and the name is granola bar. Then we have our three add ingredient function calls. This is where we add items 3001, 3002, and 3003, which are the oats, the honey, and the raisins. And then we add an output item, 2001, which is the granola bar. Now that we have a way to create some recipes, we need to go into the player class and add a new property to hold the player's known recipes. On line 40, I have the new property called recipes and its data type is an observable collection of recipe objects. Because it's an observable collection, the UI automatically gets the property change notification. Inside the player constructor on line 54, we initialize the recipes property with an empty observable collection of recipe objects. And on line 75 through 81, I added this learn recipe function. When we want the player to learn a new recipe, we'll call this function. This will do a little checking for us to see if the player already has a recipe ID that matches the recipe they're trying to learn. And if they don't, if it's not found, then we'll add that new recipe to the player's known recipes. So we can do some testing. I'm going to go into the game session class in the engine view models folder. And in our game session constructor on line 133, I added current player learn recipe. And then we call the recipe factory, get the recipe ID and the recipe is one, which is the granola bar recipe ID. This is just so that we can test out the game and make sure when we start it up that we see the player has a recipe displaying in the UI. And now we'll actually modify WPF UI main window.xaml 
to display the player's known recipes. Within the tab control for the inventory and quests, I've changed it so that it now has a tab for inventory, quest, and a new tab item for recipes. On lines 200 through 211, we have the new tab item. The header is recipes. The item source is the current player recipes property. And the only text column we're going to have on there is the name. So this should just display granola bar under the recipes tab. And now we'll run the program to check to see if everything worked. Here's our tab control with the player's inventory, their quest, and now their new recipes tab. And we see that the granola bar recipe is there. So it looks all good. That's all we're going to do in this lesson. In the actual crafting the items, that's going to be a little complex. I'm going to do some something new with the UI so we can create the items just by right clicking on the recipe. And we'll also need to add some logic in there to see if the player has all the required ingredients. If the player does, then we need to remove the ingredients from their inventory and insert the output items into the player's inventory. So there's a lot of logic there. We'll do that all in the next lesson. If you're watching the video on YouTube, as always in the description below the video, I'll have a link to the support page with all the source code. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them there on the support page and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks.